I'm going to consider this completely self-induced. Disease or not, uh, there may have been an underlying possibility of, a, of me being a disease-prone alcohol-wise, alcohol but I did it. I forced it. I forced the issue. Um, poor decisions, uh, you know, poor habits. Uh, you know, I made it happen. And, uh, Okay, today is September 17th, 2023, and uh, just happen so happens that today is uh, day 2,797 of, of sobriety for me. 2,797 days of sobriety for me. I'm an alcoholic, and uh, that's, you know, that's a number that's relevant to me. That number has no real relevance, no anniversary or anything like that associated with it. I just randomly today just decided to see how many days it was. And that got me thinking, uh, you know, I, I like to periodically um, check back in with this story. This is all part of my uh, my fitness journey, my health journey, my life journey. And uh, alcoholism has certainly paid, uh, played a big part in my life. I'm an alcoholic and I have, this is, this is part and parcel of my story. And I like to share it every so often with uh, you guys and gals because I know it's gonna resonate with some folks. Some of you have heard this. If you're new, you may not, may not know this story. Um, but today, uh, I want to delve into one particular aspect of this that um, I find particularly interesting. So, um, what I want to talk about is, is alcoholism a disease? So, let's talk about that for a little bit. Okay, so, um, is alcoholism a disease? Now, I find this fascinating, and uh, I think about this, ponder this every so often, because it you know, relates to me and uh, how I ended up where I ended up. Um, you know, there are certain people out, here, out there in the world that are destined or are inevitably going to be succumb to uh, alcoholism and it's all its um, all its effects uh, with even a single drink of alcohol, or is it simply you know environmental poor choices, poor habits, that kind of thing? Um, I don't know, but I will give you my experience and uh, tell you what uh, what I, the experience I um, went through and why I think there may be. A little bit more subtlety here and nuance than meets the eye so let's get into that a little bit you know for years um, where here in the United States anyway when I was growing up um, 18 was the legal age 18 years old was the legal age to buy alcohol well beer in this case you couldn't buy you know like um, bourbon or anything like that whiskey you could buy beer uh, so naturally you know we did um, most kids <laughs> you know, we're gonna we're gonna try it out and we did and you know there was no no ill effects there really we didn't get crazy with it uh you know there's maybe a couple of times we we drank to excess to the point where we you know suffered through it the next day but you know no ill effects and you know for years and years uh starting a career and working and um you know having a household starting a household and i could drink socially and um what i what i call gentleman drinking you just go out and drink with people at dinner and um you know just keep it under control and you know a little bit of a social lubricant that kind of thing uh, probably more so that than anything else for me really um, I've always been a little withdrawn so it always helped a little bit to have some alcohol in me to uh, you know, ease the tension a little bit for me um, but so you know I did that for years and years and uh, right up until about the time I was 52 ish I guess 52 years ago I was probably 10 or 11 years ago for me uh, things started to turn just a little bit and so I would if, if it is a demise my demise started uh, right about 11 10 11 years ago and I'd, I'd made some poor choices and uh, it was environmental I was living in a situation that was not healthy for me my choice I chose to be there and um, it was one of these situations where there was a lot of alcohol that was an alcohol type of environment and it started out you know evenings parties weekends that morphed into weekdays weeknights and uh, gradually over a period of time you get to the weekends and uh, you wake up from a Friday night you know party and you wake up and you have a little bit of a hair of the dog you get up and say man I'm not feeling all that good and you have a beer or two or whatever you happen to whatever your choice is just to make you feel better well the at this point you know it's probably I'm a year or, or two into this poor decision situation I'm in so you know, I'm still working out I'm trying to um, hold things together I don't really see a problem yet but 
it's starting to snowball just a hair so um, you know slowly I'm starting to uh, let alcohol get into my brain and uh, the addiction process has started right now it's it's it's, it's in full full force and but I, I, I think at this point um, like I said I think you know I could I could exercise myself out of it um, I thought like a lot of folks nothing to it I can handle this but inevitably um, you know I guess we call it self-medication or what I, that's what I'd call it I was just trying to make the situation I was in it was a codependency situation to be honest with you and I didn't learn that until later when I was in rehab that um, you know I was self-medicating to make this situation a little more tolerable and uh, what I thought was doable so you know eventually uh, I get up in the morning I drink in the morning get into day drinking on the weekends and next thing you know we're drinking we being me uh, the whole weekend Friday Saturday Sunday and eventually over a period of time um, not to beat a dead horse here but eventually it was all day every day Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday and it kind of snuck up on me but it didn't you know I saw it but I didn't and it uh, it got to a point where um, I couldn't sleep I, I'd wake up in the middle of the night shaking and shivering because it was, it was already an alcohol withdrawal like for three four hours and uh, I gotta tell you that's a scary place to be right there well there was nothing I could do about it except stop um, but uh, I couldn't do I couldn't do that by myself I tried several times I just it, it, the withdrawal scared me to death I read horror stories about withdrawals and I think alcohol withdrawal is, is very dangerous so uh, you know at that point I, I just simply had to ask for help I um, couldn't do it I, I, I've told this story before some of you folks have heard it um, I went to my doctor and she set me up uh, with this rehab facility in Williamsburg Virginia and I was there for 10 weeks and uh, but back to the uh, how I got there um, I'm gonna consider this completely self-induced disease or not uh, there may have been an underlying possibility of, a, of me being a disease prone alcohol alcohol wise but I did it I forced it I forced the issue um, poor decisions uh, you know poor habits uh, you know I made it happen and um, so it's all on me everything that happened I may have been around a situation that was unhealthy for me but that was my choice and I, I it, you know I, I certainly see that now and as I said you know it was a codependency situation and um, I didn't see that clearly at the time you know that's the part you know, a lot of us get fall into we just we're in the middle of something we just can't see the forest for the trees or you know but um, at any rate I'm pretty sure that uh, a lot of you folks out there uh, have a similar or some of you folks out there have a similar story you might be in the middle of it right now but um, you know I guess ultimately it doesn't matter it doesn't matter how you got there if you're there if you're at the point where you need help and you can't do this by yourself and you've tried and you've tried you just gotta gotta call and ask and get some help and um, it was scary it was scary scary as hell for me and uh, and I, I at first I admit when I first got to this rehab facility I was ready to bolt out of there it was a 12-step program AA program and that's another thing we can talk about later um, you know we got I got through there um, and it was AA and you had you know you had, you had to we, it was an AA uh, facility and it did but uh, you know I have my own take on that and I'll do another video on that if you're interested but uh, my big thing is uh, this cognitive behavioral therapy uh, CBT and that's something else I'd like to talk about too I don't want to get into that today but there was help there for me at the rehab facility and when I left out of there I never looked back I was very fortunate I've been very fortunate I had this fitness thing this workout thing that I've been doing for my entire life that I could fall back on I had my family and ultimately misses 60 plus fitness here a little bit down the road after that and uh, I, I can't even uh, tell you how different the world is for me now it's just it's just completely it's, it's a wonderful place to be right now and and then believe, believe me there was there was a point where I didn't think that was possible you may be at that point right now but it is possible you can get there and, and no matter what your age is you can fix it it's just uh, don't be afraid to ask for help and uh, 
if you want to contact me, you can you can email me or you know uh, I'd be glad to talk to you about it. Um, but I know it's doable. It's scary, but it's doable. And uh, you know that's just my story. Uh, I you know I, I did this to myself. I I had to stop digging the hole I was in. I was at you know the, the fabled bottom. So I decided one day, you know, I've heard this story before, once you're, if you're in a hole and you, you reach the bottom or you're far enough in, you don't want to go any further, you throw the shovel away and stop digging and climb your way out, scary as it is. But uh, anyway, that's my story. That's how I got, that's how I got, fell into that hole. Um, it's just uh, life. It just happens sometimes and you don't see it. You just don't see it coming. But when it does hit you, uh, it's scary and seems unfixable but that's not the case it is fixable so anyway that's all i've got today i just wanted to share that and um next week we'll get into something a little more a little more upbeat a little more workout oriented a little more of a pep talk so a lot of noise out here today um but with that i'll say till next time go get them mark out <laughs>